coccyx pain can be called coccydynia, coccygodynia, or tailbone pain, but really it's just a pain in the butt. This little tailbone here called the coccyx, it actually has a disc in between the sacrum right here and the coccyx. It even has some joints. They're all a little bit smaller than the ones here, but this is actually a moving joint. If you defecate or there are times if you sit down, there's some flexibility here that this joint has. And in the front, we have uh, some muscles that, it, that actually attach to your coccyx. So right here we have the coccygeus muscle, then we have the iliococcygeus muscle, all attaching to the coccyx, then the pubococcygeus. Those two muscles are two of the three muscles that make up what's called the levator ani muscles. And then on the backside, believe it or not, we have the gluteus maximus inserts onto the coccyx. We also have some sacrococcygeal ligaments that run here. So this little bone is the end of your spine, but it can have some structures that can contribute to coccyx pain and discomfort. Hi, I'm Dr. Adam Fields. I'm a chiropractor and I use the piezo wave shockwave machine that emits low energy focused shock waves into this area, onto the tendon junctions, onto the ligaments, into the damaged tissue to stimulate new blood vessel proliferation, actually regenerate, create new collagen, and heal this area, resolving chronic inflammation. Well, I mean, just all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I started having coccyx pain, and I had a really hard time sitting for long periods of time and it was just really uncomfortable. I had like just major discomfort. I started using a pillow that I had to have one in my car. I had to have one to travel, one at work. <laughs> one, um, I had to take it with me whenever I had to sit. And it was kind of embarrassing because I would go to a, like an outdoor barbecue and I had to take this pillow with me. So, um, I met Dr. Fields through mutual friends and he was like, come and see me, like I can help you. And I was like, okay, like I will do anything. The most common injury of the coccyx is a fall followed by repetitive trauma from sitting, biking, rowing, etc. Childbirth can be a big problem for the coccyx also. Inflammation, altered mechanics, misalignment, scar tissue, tendinopathies, and myofascial trigger points within these muscles can affect the coccyx. So you can get hypermobility from these injuries or you can get hypomobility, a chronically contracted uh, pelvic floor muscle or even scar tissue within these tendons can cause the coccyx to not move properly. And this machine is going to help it move better. So um, I started seeing Dr. Fields and started doing the piezo wave and um, aside from the adjustments too, and Dr. Fields, I mean, I started to immediately feel relief. I, after like about like six to eight visits, I was like, I am like, I don't have to take this pillow anymore. And it was amazing. I feel so great and I'm so grateful that you know, he knew what needed to be done. Let's look at some of the research. The effects of extracorporeal shockwave therapy in patients with coccygodynia. Here's a 2015 study that compares ESWT, or extracorporeal shockwave therapy, with other physical therapy modalities. They said ESWT was more effective in decreasing visual analog scale pain scores than shortwave diathermy and interferential current. Patients who received ESWT reported greater subjective satisfaction with a 70% reporting good to excellent satisfaction. The ultrasound and the diathermy group, 16% satisfaction. It looks like we won. <laughs> uh, here's another one. Extracorporeal shockwave therapy relieved pain in patients with coccydynia, a report of two cases. I really like this study because they had two male patients that had failed at other therapies. So before starting, patient one had a pain intensity of six out of 10, and patient two was a pain intensity of seven out of 10. 
four weeks after being treated with focus shock waves. That's what this is, focus shock waves, not radial shock waves, much better machine. Patient one had complete relief and patient two was down to a one out of 10. We like it. Uh, here's the kicker, and I quote, the same intensity of pain was reported in both patients after 12 months follow-up. So it's lasting relief. How does that create re lasting relief? Actually, when you're actually regenerating tissue, so a lot of people come to the office, they'll get treated, and they do a little bit better, but then even for two and three months, they're improving because that tissue is regenerating. So getting the treatment, uh, in the beginning, it is a little intense, um, but totally worth it. And honestly, it just gets easier and easier. And l after every session, I just felt better. Mm -hmm. So I would literally walk out of here feeling just so much better and so much relief in, uh, my er in the area that I was having the discomfort. Effects of extracorporeal shockwave therapy on pain in patients with chronic refractory coccidinia. Here, they had 10 patients with coccidinia, and they stated that ESWT significantly decreased visual analog pain scores at four weeks and two months post-treatments. And I love their statement on why the patients got the relief. Inflammation in the coccyx and its joint with the sacral vertebra is the proposed mechanism of pain in patients with chronic coccidinia. 80% of the patients in the study had trauma to the coccyx, right? I have seven-year-old twins. We're doing rollerblading and roller skating. I understand what it's like to see someone fall on their butt. Musculoskeletal shockwaves are not being used to disintegrate tissue, but rather to microscopically cause tissue regeneration. It is believed that shockwave therapy alleviates pain by the induction of neovascularization. That's new blood vessels, even around scar tissue. An improvement of blood supply to the tissue by initiating repairs to the chronically inflamed tissues by tissue regeneration. It's a new generation, people. It's regeneration. ESWT produces a regenerative and tissue repairing effect in musculoskeletal tissues. A lot of people ask if the shockwave therapy hurts. Well, the amazing thing about focused shockwaves from the piezo wave is what happens is, is when you're on a tissue that's rigid, that doesn't absorb the shockwaves as well, you feel an intent, a pain, right? And you let the practitioner know, okay, I feel this right now, and it's targeted. It tells you you're on the right spot. And then sometimes if we go, if we hit the trigger points, in the pelvic floor muscles, you'll actually feel a radiation or referral of pain from the myofascial trigger points. So it's diagnostic as well as helping you recover. The application of ESWT for coccidinia could effectively reduce pain intensity, especially in those resistant to other conservative therapies. Like I can sit for long periods of time. I actually sit on a saddle chair now, which I could not, absolutely couldn't do before. Um, I don't have to take the pillow anywhere. I don't even know where that pillow's at. The pillows are at anymore. <laughs> um, so I'm just, I'm fine. So whether it's a piezo wave or a combination of the piezo wave, and we have Tim Sawyer, who is an incredible pelvic floor physical therapist from the National Center for Pelvic Pain. He's a published researcher at Stanford, and we've got a team. We can help you get that took us feeling good again.